Hello, welcome back to the Bamber Agroforestry Farm. Today I'm going to um, mill up this log. It's a shining gum, Eucalyptus nitens. This is the second log up the tree. So this point here is about three and a half meters up the tree where the diameter under the bark was about 700 millimeters. And you can start reading a lot about this tree at this point. First of all, we have the sapwood boundary, the white colored wood below the bark here. Now for this purpose, shining gum is lictus susceptible. So I can't use that in the flooring that I hope to get from this tree. Then we have the heartwood section here, which is the most valuable part of the tree. And in here we have the center of the tree surrounded by a section of poor quality wood for two reasons. It's juvenile wood formed when the tree was actively growing with leaf close to that point, obviously when it was young. And it's also got the pruning wounds and you can actually see one here where I cut the branch off. There's a little bit of rot in that pruning wound in that section. So this part here will end up as waste. Today I want to get quarter sawn floorboards out of this. Quarter sawn, by that I mean a board that's actually cut so that the growth rings are actually going from face to face. That's distinct from a back sawn board. Now a back sawn board is a board that's cut that way where the growth rings go across here. Now the fundamental difference between those pieces of wood out of the same tree is that the quarter sawn board expands and contracts much less and has less problems with the drying and is less prone to cupping. Now for a floorboard, that's critical because movement and expansion across the board is fundamental. And the sawing pattern I'm going to use is one that I learned from a New Zealand tree grower for a bandsaw like this. And it involves knocking the log into segments and then re-sawing those segments. The advantage of that is it releases growth stresses which are inherent in many hardwood species, particularly the eucalypts. Uh, not so bad because we've got a short log of large diameter but still I want to break it down so I can re-saw it into nice quarter sawn boards. We're going to do it with this bandsaw which is a GT40 from Hardwood Mills up in Sydney and the advantage of that it has a very deep throat which allows us to cut well into the log. First of all I'm going to take off the top and that's essentially waste. The next cut will come right through here and you can see the bandsaw is going to have to cut deep and well down and then I'm going to take that segment away. Then I'm going to rotate the log and cut down there and then this segment. So that's number one, that's number two. This segment will then come off the mill. Then rotate it around this segment is number three and then I've got this piece here which I can then cut off there and this is number four and that cuts out the waste in the center of the log. Then these four pieces come back onto the sawmill, they may get straightened and then we can start cutting quarter sawn pieces out of it. Quarter sawing on a bandsaw, uh, it is fiddly but it's well worth it when you get the final product. When we talk about recovery of sawn timber from a log. A lot of people like to boast about how much volume recovery they get. My interest and my reason for owning a bandsaw like this and doing this sawing pattern, the recovery I'm focused on is quality per log volume. So let's see how we go. So this is the biggest cut when we're quarter sawing. It's taking a almost a full width of the log, in this case uh, including the bark, about 800 millimetres. And you can see that I've cut above where I think the knotty core or centre is as part of the first step of taking this section out. 
So I've got to lift this off now, which is a bit of a manual task, and then bring it back so that I can then tip it up on its side and do those quarter saw and cuts that I talked about before. Now you'll see it's opened up a little bit here and both ends, it's just formed a little banana and that's the releasing of those growth stresses. They're not very pronounced in a large diameter log like this, but even so, that means that if I don't straighten the log out before I cut, there'll be a slight bend in it. Now I may not need to do that because it's just over a three meter length. It's really, it's gonna be trimmed off anyway. So I take this away now and then I spin the log so that I can cut off that section over there. Or I can do it on this side because I probably will spin the other way and then cut into it. You can see the advantage of that deep throat that allows me to do a cut like this. So this is about a, a metre wide uh, cut, a bit short. It allows us to cut logs of up to a metre in diameter. And if you look at the butt log from this same tree, I'm going to need that full width in order to get that off. The other reason I like bandsaws is it's got a thin curve. We're running a tungsten carbide tip blade on this, which lasts much longer. I've got on this hydraulics that allows me to turn the log and fix it and hold it in position. So I'll follow you through the process now, but I've got to get that off, rotate the log, do the next cut, break it into five bits, throw out the core, reshape those four and start cutting quarter sawn boards, which I'll stack down here and we can see what sort of yield we get from it. Uh, the waste just goes over there, be used for firewood. Okay, I've taken that big slab off the side, so we really get a feel now for what's inside the log. And you can see all the passes, parts. You can see that they're from the end here, the center of the tree corresponds with this line through here. That section there is where all the knots are, the low density wood, and all that core problems that you've got. Around that, We've got a nice clear wood zone. So you can see I want next cut I want to do is actually take the top off this across there so I can get quarter sawn pieces out of here and running right back. If you look at the full length, there's a little bit of discoloration in the core, as you'd expect, a little bit of uh, rot. You can see a pruning wound here. This led to some rot traveling up the tree, just discoloration. But you can see how that just focuses on going up and down and hasn't moved out here into the clearwood zone. So we'll still get a good section of clear, about 200 mil wide uh, boards out of here, a bit less when we take the sap off, and then I'll be able to get some really nice ones on the other side here.
Okay, this is the broken down log. So this is what we're going to now resaw out the boards. So all that work now, we haven't produced a sawn board. But what we have done is release all the growth stresses and take the core out. So this is the center of the tree. And you can see all the knots and rot associated with that. That's going out for firewood. So this is section one here, two and three, and then four here. And they're the pieces that I can now put back on and do quarter sawing in. So you'll see how I position the log, maybe straighten it if there's too much bend as a result of the growth stresses, then take off one at a time, uh, nice clean, I hope, uh, quarter saw and boards. So this is the good part. I'll put a new blade on the mill. I always like putting a new blade on because we won't be cutting through bark anymore and, uh, and, the, and the dirt. We'll be going into clean and we want nice, clean, uh, precise. We're going for 22 and a half millimetre thick boards to dress down to uh, about um, 15, 16 mil floorboards. So we finished that first log yesterday. This is what we're on. It started raining, so I couldn't do too much videoing. But uh, we've got a stack here of quarter sawn boards. Now my task is to mill the bottom of the same tree. It's an even bigger log, uh, 900 mils under bark at one end. But uh, we'll get more timber again out of that and wider quarter sawn boards as a result. It is the middle of winter, and that's the best time to mill eucalypt timber because we can have a slow drying process up until spring, and then we can increase the heat as it will in the solar kiln and we can finish it hot and that's the key to drying eucalypts carefully is to dry them in a humid cool environment for the first few months and then finish uh, in a kiln and lay them in the house so it should be a six to eight month process uh, from mill so a single man operation uh, we can mill large logs tractor logging winch uh, this was tricky to get on the the front end loader could barely lift this log it's only three metres long. Uh, but we can, as a single person operation, get some useful timber. It is labour intensive, and uh, that process means it's a bit slower. Uh, but the key is to get the quality of the board out of the entrance. So it's exciting to be involved in uh, small scale milling in Australia uh, with big farm grown eucalypt logs and locking up carbon in timber and getting it into our own house. Uh, thanks for joining us.